see. We'll see what you can see, I guess we'll see. See? Welcome back to Freedom One Garage. We are still on the Bronco, and I apologize. That came out. Well, I had to go to some appointment. I went to the dentist this morning. I don't, it wasn't fun. It wasn't bad. Nice people, but not my favorite thing to do. But anyway, went to the dentist. Everything's all good. Uh, and then we're back on the Bronco. Looks a little different, I know, than where we left off. I apologize for that. If you missed out with what happened in the last video, make sure you hit the subscribe, and that way you'll get notified of all the future videos. But we've got a plastic bag over the pretty blue. We'll unveil that in a minute, but we went ahead and we hand washed the inside of the engine compartment and even did a little hand buff, hand wax on this fender to bring it close to the new paint on the passenger fender and i think guys and gals we're pretty close it's gonna look good and remember there's gonna be stuff so that's all right and then we started dabbing on the frame bits uh, this side is done front to back slowly drying and you know right now we're getting what you can see like you're checking out the engine and the frame looks good up here. I don't know um, if the customer is going to eventually want, you know, a full frame kind of job here. It ain't easy to do, uh, but it probably wouldn't take too many hours. But it, you can see on the sides, we don't have coverage on the side of the frame rail or the coil spring bucket or the shop tower and you know especially when it comes time to put the lift on we could probably achieve that in a lot of the frame um, the troubled parts will be the center cross sections of the frame because they're covered you know in 48 years of dirt roads you know, multi-purpose grease, oil, transmission fluid, and, uh, you know, whatever else is leaked and then stopped and then leaked again. And mud and tar. You know, don't forget about the tar fiasco on this thing. I have a feeling when we get to this stage, we will dress this up a little bit too. I don't know that we'll do everything. Probably, I don't know, probably the for sure the visual parts and you know the frame horns and stuff but when it comes to like the underneath of the truck in this area i'm gonna say that's just gonna have to remain factory and kind of grimy you know this isn't a frame off it's gonna get driven so we gotta continue to remind ourselves of that but as far as aesthetics go in the front and the engine compartment of this thing you know yeah it's gonna look nice to have some semi-gloss, yes, that's what we're using, semi-gloss uh, Rust-Oleum uh, enamel. We've done, again, we went over the Pour 15 in this corner, and then we've done this whole rail, and under here in the motor mount, we've got, reached back as far as we can with, you know, speaking of reaching back, oh, and by the way, using foam brushes, this is my foam brush extendo tool uh, for reaching down in there. Worked pretty well, actually. But then when we're done painting, we can just throw those foam brushes away. Uh, so we've got to finish wrapping around the steering gear, get this center section done. And we're going to let this dry. I'm not sure how we're going to... I want to dress up the steering shaft and the nubbin of the column there. I don't know if we'll try and brush that on or if we'll try to spray that. Probably brushing is going to be... You know, most, least, most, it's, it's not going to be as messy, I don't think, if we brush it. So, that's where we're at. Um, I'm not going to time lapse you, because we're almost done. Could have time lapsed, you know, the painting part, but I, I was just mm, in there. So, 
anyway that's where we're at let's finish with this frame and then we'll do steering shaft and then oh one quick note i wanted to move these uh, transmission cooler lines out of the way and i was also going to take the transmission dipstick out but then i got under there and got the looking um i forgot on these c4 jobs the transmission stick goes into the side of the transmission oil pan and then these cooler lines go in between the dipstick and the body of the transmission so we're going to let them ride for now when it comes time to service that transmission and we have to pull that pan to change the filter then we'll pull the dipstick and then we'll pull these lines and uh, clean them up and either reinstall them probably paint them and then reinstall them so no big deal there just not going to do it now um yeah we have this little part of the uh bulkhead we're going to do next so then we can kind of i'll show you how that power brake booster um, bracket fits it's going to be pretty slick so there's your update and you're welcome back 93 degrees i don't it's it's hot but we're gonna keep digging away thanks for watching let's get after it while we're watching that paint dry we're also going to paint some other stuff we got to clean up the fan i'm not sure it's going to need paint but we might do it but we're taking the brackets the accessory brackets off the front of the motor and painting them this is one, this will be one, the alternator adjuster bracket. You all know what that looks like. The gas pedal um, linkage assembly uh, and that kind of stuff. This one I took over to the parts washer. I believe this is power steering of some sort. <laughs> uh, took it to the parts washer, cleaned the thick layer of gunk off of it, and then uh, hit it with some brake cleaner and now we're gonna head out to the painting tree. Looks like there's some weather coming in. We might get some rain. I'm just gonna pretend that it's still hot and dry and not gonna rain. And the more I pretend that, the more it might actually, you know, rain. Uh, there. Can't, nope. There's no good place for you in the painting tree. So this painting tree, you've seen it before maybe in uh, some of the Falcon videos and stuff. We just kind of hang stuff up and find these branches. The tree itself is still alive, but these pine trees, they drop their lower branches. This was in a whole row of trees and, oh, that's too way too, even too tall for me. Uh, there we go. That's better. We got a little bit of a breeze here coming in, but I think we'll be all right. It's the next day. We're making progress. It might not look like much, but we're slowly taking the things that we're going to keep, cleaning them up like this vacuum hose and tube. Uh, the distributor, we got it all spiffy, shiny, clean. The EGR uh, base plate, it took a while on the parts cleaner to get it to back to where it's, you know, presentable. Um, we still have to do, oh, I got to do this one next. We got to do this um, throttle linkage um, pivot point and bracket. We'll get that done next, but let's go out to the painting tree and see what see what we got going on right now. Uh, this one needs to come out. This is the uh, coil, ignition coil bracket. Nice day, starting to warm up. It's probably 82, so not too hot for painting. And the nice thing about the painting tree is it's uh, in the shade. So we've got, this is the bracket for the uh, upper steering column, kind of retainer bracket. And we got the bolt in the shop. This is the air cleaner bracket. 
it's done it's all dried up and then this is of course the alternator bracket so we're going to take these two guys down and put the uh, coil bracket up and give it a little spritz you over here and shady spot mostly this particular bracket we're not concentrating too much on the inside of it because it's just going to be hugging the coil anyway but the outside circumference and edges and stuff are what's going to be visible and we got to run into town here in just a few minutes and the customer wants to go ahead and replace this coil because it's rusty and looks kind of nasty but it's also got a dent in it so you never know um, we'll go ahead and replace on it there and then we turn the can upside down Wipe off the nozzle so we can have it so we can see a clear nozzle. So next time we use this, we're ready to rock. Not a whole lot of updates in the engine compartment. We did put the crank pulley back on. It's all painted nice. And oh, by the way, we're doing the bolts too. So this is our setup for painting bolts. Um, just an old license plate with a bunch of holes stuck in it. Uh, we're doing the carriage bolt and lock nut for the column bracket now and then this little guy is for the distributor we're even going to give him a little paint uh, let's see next thing we got this rag here we're going to go over this uh, heat riser tube with some uh, uh, with a scotch bright pad clean it up a little bit uh, same thing with this vacuum tube from the transmission and you know like i said earlier we're not going to do the trans dipstick and the trans cooler lines yet until we are under there servicing the transmission because that all comes off with that uh we still haven't tackled the steering you know the actual shaft we've got the collar up there painted we've got the gear painted i don't know why for sure i'm procrastinating here I don't think we're going to do the distribution block as far as pulling it out and trying to shine that bracket up and stuff. We're just going to let it live. Um, yeah. So, not much to look at here yet, but, you know, we've got bracketry, bracketry. We'll get that one cleaned up next. Um, this guy, the vacuum. We got things that are getting ready to go back on, I guess is what I'm saying. And once we get some of the basics back on, then we'll get some room on our bench here and we'll tackle that air cleaner. Um, also got to get an alternator. Should probably look that up and figure that out. We're gonna need throttle, so we better get that throttle um, pivot point cleaned up. And cleaned. here. Let's talk ignition coils for just a second. Um, this is the ride that came off of the 302 and our little Bronco. And even though it has some markings, there's a Motocraft sticker on it or printing on it, it is extremely rusty and crusty. And I don't think I could get the rusty and crusty off without uh, also taking those markings. Plus it's got a nice little dent here. So customer made the call on that right away. Um, yeah look what the irish parts store had in the stock so just a hair taller but same hookups even the same kind of blue cap so that's gonna look really snazzy on top of our engine especially being how we painted the bracket 
Ford 1635 Duplicolor once more Ford semi gloss black. So we're gonna throw this on really quick and start. Uh, we've started reassembling slowly. So so far today, we took the voltage regulator off, cleaned it up. It's a cool motorcraft unit, and I gotta be honest, that thing could look pretty gnarly, and I'd repaint it or do something to it before I would go away from the original Ford Motorcraft voltage regulator because that thing's about as good as you get in that department. Um, we put this bracket back on, painted it. We're gonna go get the throttle bracket now. We're gonna throw the coil on here and you know, just start putting stuff back together. The distributor's clean. We got an O-ring for it, so it's going in today. If with a tad bit of luck, we might have this thing kind of back into running shape by the end of today. We still have to either blast or wire brush the battery tray back into shape. Um, we'll decide what we do there. And then, uh, yeah, we're, we're not too far away. So let's just keep on keeping on here. Okay, updates on the beautification process. This guy, wasn't quite sure what to do with it. And again, um, I would much rather keep the stock motorcraft unit than just replace it with something from who knows where from one of the parts stores. So we did some wire brushing to it um, in the drill and I just didn't like it. I'll show you here. Let's get in a good, good light. You know, I cleaned up pretty good, but I kind of want to have a uniform look. And what I did is I drug the sandblasting cabinet out of the back of the shop. And I think if we just give it a quick, you know, schmoozing, over all the metal areas that it'll bring it back to close to, you know, stock look. I don't know what happened up here. It's got some goo up there. We'll scrape that off first, but. So we're gonna throw it in the cabinet and I'll try to get you guys an angle where you can kind of watch. We'll see what happens. We'll try that. It's gonna get noisy um, and you may not be able to see much, but we'll see here. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what you can see. I guess we'll see. See? Of course. Get the battery tray out of the way. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm looking for. I know right now. And I can get between all the little fins on the front of it. We're just going to give it a light kind of once over here. Oh, yeah, this is a great idea. I'm pretty pleased. Let's do this back just, just for funsies. Make sure we got all the edges. If you haven't seen the sandblasting video or the cabinet video, go back. Um, it shows you this is the Harbor Freight cabinet and it shows all the little upgrades we made to it to make it work really well. This uh, is, so I like this when I have an idea and it pays off. Um, this is exactly the finish I was going for. 
doesn't look brand spanking new but looks like you know almost new and yeah it, you get down in between the little heat sink fins and everything awesome i was very pleased and what a minute and a half in there you guys are you kidding me i already wrestled with this for about 10 minutes with the wire brush and who knows what i would have tried to do you know with a brillo pad or or getting down in these little these little crevices and yeah literally less than two minutes in the sand blaster and we're happy happy why don't we call that part one uh this video is going to get long and we better break it up into at least two parts this is quite the ambitious undertaking and uh you know i'm glad i can share it with you we're gonna get right on to the next one and uh hopefully the end result will be worth all the effort and time that are going into this bronco so thanks for watching we'll catch you on the next one